Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Peter Jarrick of Current Analysis and Steve Shah of Citrix. Gentlemen, welcome. We're going to be talking about NFV from hopefully a slightly different perspective this time, which is this. I'd like to begin by asking you actually, Peter, if I might, how fast do you think service providers are moving towards and embracing NFV right now? Some are moving very quick, some are moving more slowly. Um, and to some extent, that's just a function of their size, right? Some have mm -hmm. the size and the wherewithal. You hear all the time AT&T talking about all the education efforts, all of the restructuring that they have to do. Not, not everyone can move at that same speed, right? No. Not every organization can retrain thousands and thousands of people, but the interest is there from all of them, right? So even if they're all not moving on implementations and POCs and re-architecting their networks and developing their own things, um, they're all engaged in some way because they know they have to move in that direction. Well, what I'm finding interesting is that they're finally getting to the point where the time frames are really realistic. You know, when we started this a couple of years ago, you would hear about transforming to NFV in six months. And it was, it was an absurd concept. But, you know, I can appreciate the urgency around wanting to make that kind of transformation. The promises were fantastic. Now, we're seeing time frames of three to five years as really yeah. being realistic. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's fine. I mean, when we would do surveys and we would ask, what's your time frame for implementation? I would say for three years in a row, it was always 18 months. <laughs> right, it was the same 18 months. The thing is, they didn't know what they didn't know, right? right? You'd ask about the obstacles. Three years ago, price was an obstacle, but organizational issues weren't. Mm -hmm. We got one guy leading this thing, organizationally we figured this out. Two years later, organizational issues are huge, right? Absolutely. Because they didn't know what they didn't know a couple of years ago, and so it takes time for this stuff to, to get figured out. No, and that's the, the org part is the tricky part. Yeah. You know, we were just talking a little earlier about a project that uh, we were watching unfold where they were actually automating firewalls. And firewalls, if you think about it, complicated devices, hundreds of thousands of policies, global implementation. In that circumstance, they were expecting 80% of the time to go to the infrastructure. And what they found was that 80% actually went to the operations and the organization. And well, once they figured out the tech, that was easy. The people took a while. Yeah. Can we also talk about this well newish concept that you hear, as you said before, being buzzword compliant? You know, one, one of the most important things in NFE, certainly during the months the hype cycle was building, this notion of containers and containerization. What are they? Why are they important? And do the service providers know what they're taking on? So containers are a smaller form factor of being able to bring abstraction to a piece of software. So whereas before we were virtualizing a whole machine and taking the physical piece as part of that consideration, now our, our edges are only the application itself. So if you can wrap the application up and it's in its own little private ball, it can start running anywhere you can run a container. So that, that's the vision at least. Right. And okay. I, I, I think to the question of do they know what it is, I think it's a similar answer to the question before. Some do, some don't, right? Mm -hmm. Those who've maybe been engaged more understand where they need to go. Those who've done the research and sort of understand, here are my requirements. Oh, great, my requirements suggest that I may need a container in these situations or a container will work. They probably understand it. There are others who, if they're not as far along, probably are going, heard about these container things, and some guy's worried that he doesn't want his job to go away because he screwed up and didn't look at the right thing, and so he doesn't necessarily know what it is. But I think, again, you have that, we still have multiple layers of, of service providers, some who are at a little bit further along in the maturity curve. Yeah, absolutely. When, when Netscaler introduced uh, the containerized Netscaler, uh, what we found was that there were a lot of people who were interested in it, but weren't quite clear on the use case. And as we fleshed out the use cases, then the pieces for where it fit in, where it didn't really just kind of became clear cut. There are some folks who were far enough down the line with virtualization, it made sense to really stick with that. And there are those who were really actually rewriting their applications or changing the way their app deployments worked. They were the ones for whom containers were just making a tremendous amount of sense. Okay, thank you. What about the performance of NFV solutions? Again, we'll refer back to the hype cycle. It's been built up and built up um, to, to an extent that, you know, prognostications were just far too, far too generous to themselves. Um, what about now that we're seeing real life deployments? Not many yet in service providers, but certainly in big enterprises. Um, what is happening on the performance front and what impacts do you think that's going to have on vendors as they are actually tested in real world circumstances, one bit of kit against another? More than anything, or at least getting to a point where performance can be recognized as an issue, right? So we spent a number of years educating the market 
operators understanding what we're talking about, service providers recognizing where they need to go. And I think the performance issue wasn't top of mind, right? Let's get to understand this stuff now, right? Now we're at a point where we understand, hey, there are differences between some of these architectures, there are differences between software implementations. I mean, you know, one, of my, one of my favorite stories was a few years ago, one of our customers, we do assessments of various network functions, right? We were doing a, an EPC assessment and said, so is your virtual EPC commercially ready? Yes, it is. Uh, and we're working on X, Y, and Z, and we're working on DPDK. I'm like, oh, great. So DPDK, you're working on it because it'll, it'll get the, the data plane up to a place where, where it needs to be so that this is a useful product. So wait, you have a commercial product, but you don't have DPDK involved, which will make it a useful commercial product? So why is it a commercial product if it doesn't, well, we're getting there, right? <laughs> so I mean, it just points to the fact that, that we had commercial products, but even the people selling them would recognize, eh, not quite ready for prime time. So I think it just takes time. And now that some of these solutions are implemented and we are seeing them in the field, people can appreciate where the performance is um, and can begin to consider it. Yeah, and the, the it depends on that really comes from where you're, you're starting from. Right, you know there was a lot of vendors in the space where they were doing x86 appliances for a long time. Right, the x86 appliance piece started in '99. So if you've been building on x86 appliances this entire time, the shift to virtualization is pretty straightforward. You can you already have an optimized code base. You don't need to necessarily switch to DPDK to get the win. Uh, now, when you look at the performance piece, the part that we have to be careful about is. We don't want to get in this trap where we think that we have to replace a single piece of software from a single piece of hardware. That, that can be misleading. Uh, a lot of what we're talking about in NFE is horizontal scale out. That said, there's some new stuff out there that is doing 1400 gig performances in VMs, but read them carefully. As we move towards real world deployment of NFE, is there any, any indication yet of whether it's a rough ride or a smooth transition from the old to the new? It's going to be, I won't call it rough, but I think the, the key thing to appreciate is that there's going to be a period of time where you're going to be doing both. And whether, you know, it's possible that you may not ever get away from both. And there's a valid use case for both. The thing to think about is in amongst your ecosystem of partners that are helping you get there, do you have partners that can live in both worlds? Uh, having one that can only do hardware or only do software may not take you all the way. And I think the question, I think it's great to say, it's probably not, Rough might not be the right word, but it's going to be complicated, right? Because if you need to support both of the physical and virtual, or even multiple virtual you know, different functions, which you will, right? Then we get into questions of orchestration, which gets really fuzzy, which gets really difficult. Um, and then every network is going to be different. Every operator is going to have different needs, which means it gets complicated because there's no cookie cutter template. So I'm not really sure it would be rough, but it's definitely going to be complex. Very interesting. We are out of time, but Steve Shaw and Peter Jarrick, thank you both very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you.